that you all are as bored as I am. Well, there isn't much to do, is there? Well, there most certainly is, and I'm going to show you what it is. Hi guys, my name is Evan and I'm the Messy Lassie. Welcome to my channel. I'm doing a short series on things that you can make when you are bored at home. So today, I'm going to be making some DIYs that you can make at home with things that you already have. So if you're looking for something to do to get rid of that boredom and you want to have some fun, then let's get started. So for the first project, I'm going to be making some homemade air dry clay. So in this project, I'm going to be making some different kind of trinkets to hold your jewelry and your small items. You'll need one cup of baking soda, half cup of corn flour, and one third cup of water. Mix these together on medium heat on a stove until they are nicely combined and sticky. Cover a board with corn flour and take the mixture out onto it. Then roll it into a ball to reduce the stickiness. Once it's done, your air dry clay is ready and you can store it in an airtight container. This DIY is both for organization and for decor. So first I'm going to be making a unicorn head trinket. So to make this, you're going to start by taking some uh, clay into your hands and try to soften it. Once it's nice and soft, you're going to start rolling it into a ball. Then you're going to press it between your palms and you're going to start rolling it with a roller. So if you're someone like me who doesn't have a roller, that's alright. You can take any bottle like of a mist or a perfume and start rolling with that. So I'm going to roll this in all directions so that the clay spreads out equally. Also going to be using my palm to spread it nicely around. Once I have the size that I want, I'm going to take the cutout that I have previously made and I'm going to place it onto the clay. And I'm going to use a butter knife to cut it because hey, I don't have a crafting knife. I'm going to use my knife and finger to kind of like create a boundary around the shape. I'm basically pushing the edges inward. And then I'm using water to mend any cracks that I see on the clay. Next, I'm making the unicorn horn by rolling the clay into a long piece with one end a bit pointy. I'm twisting the other end inward and using water to stick the layers together. I'm twisting the clay to make layers one over the other. Once it's all twisted, I'm going to pinch the top to make it nice and pointy. Tap the bottom with water and stick it to the unicorn head. I'm using my fingers to blend the horn into the base and using water to stick these two pieces together. Once this is all done, let it dry. 
Next, I'm going to be making a really adorable trinket that's round in shape and has bunny ears. So for this, I have used a cap of a jar to create a circular shape and then I have used the same technique to create the boundary by pushing the edge inward. I'm rolling out a piece of clay and using my cutout to cut a bunny ear. edges meet and I am going to use water to stick these two edges together. Then I am going to dab the bottom with water and stick it to the base. I'm going to make the other ear and then I'm going to stick it to the base as well. Once these are dry, I'm going to use Sharpie markers to color these in. For the bunny ear trinket, I'm using a nice pink color. I'm going to color the inside of the ears, the edges of the ears and around the whole trinket. Done, I'm going to keep it away so it can dry. For the unicorn horn, I'm using different colors. black sharpie to create the eyes and the nostrils. Then I'm going to let this dry. The last trinket that I have is actually a cat's head. So this was made quite accidentally. Uh, my first unicorn head actually broke from the middle so I cut it out and turned it into a cat's head. After this I'm going to glaze them with Mod Podge to give them a nice shine. And now your adorable trinkets are ready to hold your jewelry. You can also use them to hold different items like bobby pins and paper clips. Next up, I have a DIY for all the trendy girls out there who love a good accessory. So scrunchies are super in these days and I'm going to show you two different styles that you can make very easily. I'm repurposing this old polka dot t-shirt that I have to make an oversized scrunchie with a bow tie. First, I'm going to measure and cut out a rectangle which is 7 inches wide and 17 inches long. The seam allowance is included in this measurement. I'm going to fold this in half with right sides facing each other. I'm going to leave the edges open at both ends and then I'm going to sew along the length of the rectangle to create a tube. Once done, I'm going to use a pin to turn the tube right side out 
and then I'm going to press the tube with an iron. Next, I'm going to take an elastic and I'm going to cut it into a 6 inches long piece. Because this is a bit wide for my liking, I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to use a pin to secure it to the tube. And then I'm going to use another pin to insert it through the tube. Once done, I'm going to overlap the edges of the elastic and I'm going to sew them together. Next, I'm folding one end of the tube inward and I'm inserting the other end into this folded end. I'm using an invisible stitch to sew these together. After this, I'm going to make the bow tie. To make the bow tie, I'm going to make two lines on a piece of paper. Next, I will mark the center and draw the bow tie. I want my bow tie to be 13 inches long, so I'm only drawing half of the bow tie. I'll then cut this out. cut a piece of fabric and fold it in half. I'll trace the bow tie onto the fabric and pin this together. Then I'm going to cut the bow tie. And if you're someone like me who keeps on forgetting things, then you're going to later realize that you need two pieces of bow tie. So, you're not going to forget because I just reminded you. Once both pieces are ready, I'll pin the right sides together and leave an opening so I can later turn it right sides out. And then again, if you're someone like me who lets her mind drift away while she's working, you're going to completely forget to leave an opening and then your opening is going to end up somewhere else. Next, I'm going to turn the bow tie right side out. I'm using a pen to push the fabric out. Once done, I'm going to press it with an iron. Next, I'm folding the edges and the opening inward and using an invisible stitch to sew these together. Are ready, take the bow tie and tie it around the scrunchie. Make sure to tie where the two ends of the scrunchie meet. Make sure that the stitch is inside rather than outside. You can tie it once or twice however you like. And this super nice, super easy, oversized scrunchie with a bow tie is ready. Now we are going to make the next scrunchie. For the next scrunchie, I'm using an old grey t-shirt. I'll cut a rectangle that is 4 inches wide and 13 inches long. The seam allowance is included in these measurements. Next, I'm going to doodle different shapes and sizes of hearts. You can doodle whatever you like, whatever goes with your vibe. Try it. I'm folding it in half with the right sides together. I'll stitch it along the rectangle to create a tube and leave the two openings at each end. Once done, I'm going to turn right sides out. I'm inserting a 6 inches long elastic into the tube and stitching the edges together. And then I'm going to finish 
of the rest of the scrunchy like I did with the previous one. So this super adorable customized doodle scrunchy is ready. You can draw or write whatever you like, whatever inspires you. I really like a good candle. I feel that it brings a really nice aesthetic to any place. So today I'm going to be DIYing a candle that fits my vibe. For this I'm going to take a nice blue tinted glass and I'm going to write on it with a sharpie marker. So you can take inspiration from anywhere and write anything that you like or draw anything that inspires you. I like inspirational messages so I'm going with find your spark. First I'm going to take a piece of paper and I'm going to ensure that it fits into the glass. Next I'm going to write my text onto the paper. Since I'm not really good at writing in straight lines and I don't trust my writing skills, so I'm writing this with pencil first and then I'm going to trace it with sharpie marker. Once this is dry, I'm going to tape this inside the glass and trace the words with a golden sharpie marker. To make the candle, I'm taking two different colors. These are scented candles and are already smelling so good. If you can't find scented candles, you can add essential oils while you are melting the candles. I am going to break these two candles into different bowls. Next, I am going to cut the incense of the candle and wrap it around the pencil. And then I will place the pencil on top of the glass so the incense is inside the glass. I'll take two pieces of fabric and tie these around the glass and secure the pencil in place. In a pan, heat water and place the container with your candle into the boiling water and let it melt. Once it has melted, I'm going to pour it into the glass. To make a nice aesthetic design, I have tilted the glass in one direction. Once this is dry, I'm going to melt the pink candle and I will pour it over the yellow candle. So the good part of this DIY is that the candle can come out of the glass. So in this way I can use this DIY in two manners. This is why I have made this really aesthetic uh, candle with two colors. organize our closet, this is the best time to take out clothes that you no longer wear and DIY them into something adorable. So for this next project, I am using this orange t-shirt that I no longer wear and I am going to DIY it into a flower cushion. First, I am going to make a cutout of the flower. I have taped three A4 papers together and have created a square that is 16 inches wide and 16 inches long. Next, I am going to fold it into a triangle. Then I am going to fold it in half and mark the center. And then I will unfold it. Then I will take the right end of the triangle and fold it so it meets the top point of the triangle. After marking the folded part, I am going to unfold it. Then I will take the top point of the triangle and I will fold it to meet the marked point I have just created. I am going to mark this folded area and unfold it again. Now I will take the right point of the triangle and fold it across the triangle so that the two marks I have just created meet each other. 
Next, I'm going to fold the left point of the triangle across the folded part. And then I'm going to fold it in half. I'm now going to draw an arc. And then I'll cut it out. Now I'm going to trace this flower onto the t-shirt. Because I want two flowers, I'm going to put everything in place so that I can cut two flowers at the same time. I take one flower and I'm going to draw lines from one corner of the petal across to the other corner of the petal. And I'm going to sew onto these lines. To connect both these flowers together, I need a long rectangular strip. To understand how I'm going to measure this strip, I'm going to see how many petals I have. I have basically six petals in one flower. So if I measure around the petal, it's six inches wide. So six inches into six petals gives me 36 inches. So this means that I need around 38 to 40 inches long rectangular strip. I'm going to cut two 20 inches long and three inches wide strips. Then I'm going to paint right sides together and I'm going to sew these together. So I want to add a disclaimer here. When you're trying to sew, make sure you take a fabric that your sewing machine can work on. I went to a lot of trouble while making this DIY because my sewing machine wasn't working on this fabric and I had to place a paper under my fabric every time so that I can sew. So, uh, if your machine isn't working on your fabric or if you don't know how to sew or if you don't have a machine, that's alright. You can also use fabric glue for this project. Next, I'll take the center of the strip and I'm going to start pinning it to the front of the cushion. The front of the cushion is the flower that I have sewn lines on. I'm pinning the right sides together. Once I've pinned all along the flower, I'll pin the ends of the strip together. First, I'll sew along the flower and then I'll sew these ends together. Once done, I'll turn it inside out. I'll take the other flower and I'm going to pin wrong sides together. While pinning this, I have to make sure that I'm pinning petal of the back flower over petal of the front flower. I'll leave an opening so I can turn the right side out. Once I've sewn, I'll turn it right sides out. And then I'll fill it with cotton. Once done, I'm going to fold the edges of the opening inside and I'm going to sew these together with an invisible stitch. Next, I'll take a thread and I'm going to stitch it through the center of the cushion from the front to the back. And then I'm going to take the thread from the back to the front and then again from the front to the back and then I'm going to pull it hard and tie everything nicely together. Next, I'll make a button by cutting a circle. I've stitched along the edge of the circle. After adding a bit cotton to the circle, I'll pull the thread and create a ball. After that, I'll tie the thread together. I'll stitch it to the center of the cushion at the front. So this adorable, super easy flower cushion is ready for a new home.
making these DIYs. They took quite a lot of my time, so I wasn't bored at all. So if you want to do something to pass your time and have fun while you're at home, do try these DIYs. If you like the video, please give it a like. And if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, then don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon. You can also follow me on Instagram. The link is in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching and um, until next time, take care, have fun and be messy. Bye!